Reef Bum is sponsored by Champion Lighting and Supply, Polo Reef, and Fauna Marine. Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. So we are going to continue our little mini series here on ICP test evaluations. I've got Mike from Shallow Reefing on YouTube and Instagram with me. Mike selected me as his Fauna Marine ICP test advisor. I uh, sent him a few little um, bullet points in terms of what I had seen on that and we decided to collaborate here and do a little short consultation video so you could be a fly on the wall to see what I'm advising and what Mike has been doing with his reef tank, which is a 200 gallon tank, right there, Mike? Yep, 200 gallon Invan Marine tank. And then I have a 20 gallon long frag tank kind of plumbed into my trigger systems 44 sum. So just uh, briefly describe to us besides that um, tank and the uh, sump, what you're uh, doing in terms of how you reef with that tank and additive supplements, that sort of thing, just briefly. Yeah, so I'm doing the BRS bulk two part with uh, the Tropic Marin uh, A and K, and then also their uh, part C that I'm doing the hybrid uh, balling method. And then I'm also doing about two and a half liters of calc wasser through uh, an Avast calc stirrer a day. And what about uh, additives and anything um, that you're doing to the tank in terms of nutrient control, phosphate control, stuff like that? Oh, yeah. So I got a uh, Foss Guard in the tank and then I have, you know, quilt batting that I take out and then um, front and filter socks and a Reef Octopus um, 200 space saving skimmer. And then right before I do a water change, I do 20, uh, 20 gallons every week on the tank. And before I do the water change the night before, I just dump in um, 10 milliliters of uh, Brightwell uh, Phosphate E before the water change. Just kind of knock those phosphates down because I noticed my phosphate and nitrate uh, balance was off. So I was dosing a potassium nitrate mix just to kind of get them closer to that 100 to 1 ratio that Fauna Marin recommends. So, you know, the one thing I always say to people is just be careful with the phosphate removers because they can, you know, they not only bind phosphate, but they could also bind other valuable, you know, trace elements. So just, just be aware of that, that it could impact in terms of what you're seeing with the traces with your ICP test results. That's, that's always one thing, you know, it's, it's great in terms of being able to use that stuff to get rid of the phosphate, but just, you know, be cautious with it, that's all. Okay, appreciate it, I didn't know that. So, all right, let's, uh, I'm gonna just kind of hop around to a few things that stood out to me, and um, just a couple of notes here in terms of the attention. It's really the, these elements and these ratios at the top that are in red are kind of like mm -hmm. the, the things that have been red flagged that you should be more, um, you know, look into in terms of the, uh, the, the notes that are in this fauna marine. Uh, ICP test report. So, and, and, and the other thing I just also want to mention in terms of sampling, I think one thing that people might not realize is that you don't want to like do sampling after like a big water change. You don't want to do sampling after dosing bacteria or maybe dosing some other types of things to the tank. So you just got to make sure that you're, um, you're, you're doing some things to make it a, a clean as sample as possible. All right. So with that said, let's um, let's jump into fluoride because that kind of struck me as uh, something to talk about here. You know, fluoride is um, it, it's a bit low. It's an important, you know, halogen. So you may want to um, elevate that a little bit. I think you uh, mentioned perhaps before we got on the live stream that you are dosing uh, fluoride. Oh, there you go. Big Bob. You, get, yeah. you are dosing uh, fluoride. <laughs> you know, indicator species of low fluoride are tenuous blue green montes so if you're not seeing blues pop in those kind of corals then um that's that's a consideration it's also a very good um element in terms of having it uh, elevated to protect against aggregating flatworms um monte eating nudies so it's it's important uh, halogen that you should be aware of and you know the other thing that's important and another important halogen is is iodine Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a little bit uh, high as well. If uh, you're experiencing darkening of corals, you're having some algae issues, if that iodine starts getting higher and higher, that could be something that um, you might need to course correct on. 
So uh, just be aware of that. And then um, ratios, let's get into some ratios here as I scroll down the um, fluoride to iodine ratio, which is right here is, is very low and, and you should really kind of target a 25 to one ratio. Yours is kind of like at the bottom right there. Mm -hmm. um, if you're getting uh, dinos, then you're going to want to uh, correct that ratio. I don't know if you had any issues with dinos or any algaes no, or no dinos, but cyan has been the bane of my existence forever. I've always had little patches. So I've tried numerous methods, but I'm just always having little patches of cyano in my tank, but yeah, you know, I mean that, that could be an indication, you know, of that ratio being out of whack. Another thing is to look at your um, bromine and fluoride, um, you know, ratio, this again is something that could cause corals to darken. It also could be a cause of some uh, some algae issues. So you know, certainly look at those two ratios and look at the bromide, the fluoride, and the iodine, and and try to make those necessary adjustments to get those um, ratios more into the uh, into the green and potentially help you with the uh, the cyano issue. Uh, let's go to as I scroll up here nitrates and phosphates so your nitrates are a little high i mean i usually like to have my nitrates in the five to ten part per million range but it's not necessarily about the levels of the nitrates and the phosphates um individually it's more about that ratio your your phosphates are a little bit on the high side it's mm -hmm. it's more about trying to get to that 100 to one nitrate to phosphate ratio to um again really try to help prevent any algae issues and and really to have a healthy um reef tank um yeah. ha has your nitrate and phosphate been fluctuating over time have you struggled with either of those things i struggle with phosphates for a while and it was mostly you could i like how you can see the trends on your graph and you could kind of see when i was feeding really heavily with uh like freeze-dried colonis I mean, I had no idea about the phosphate and nitrate ratios of the food that you're feeding, and it was just spiking everything up really high on my phosphates, and that's when I noticed things getting out of whack. So I stopped feeding that and started doing a little bit more phosphate management, and it's actually brought it down some, but it's still high. Yeah, I just um, clicked on the total phosphate to see that uh, <laughs> spike right there. So you were you were close to uh, point to what over point two five. So that was yeah, uh, that was high. You were cranking there. Yeah, we're cranking. So, you know, again, that is, um, you know, something that potentially could be causing um, the cyano. So you just want to um, be aware of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, all right, moving to the uh, dynamic elements. The dynamic elements are important. They're metals. They're uh, zinc, vanadium, copper, uh, nickel, and molybdenum. So your uh, your zinc, copper and nickel and i'll go to uh zinc here first yeah zinc is really low um vanadium seems to be just uh you know in that acceptable range the copper is pretty low and uh the nickel is um very low so you know i don't know if you have any millies but if uh you have any millies and they're not oh, i had an issue with one of my millies and it just stn'd on me um I don't know, I guess like eight months ago, I was dealing with all that. So that probably is what happened with my, you know, Millie. It, it was sad. Well, I was going to say that if, if you have some Millies in the tank and they're not really basing out a lot, then that could be an indicator that you've got low nickel, you know, so that's that's one thing to uh, to look out for. Um, you know, I mean, copper is is something you don't want to have very high levels of uh, of copper because that could be have some very negative effects. But you do want to have um, enough copper where it can be uh kind of like in that green zone right there so yeah. you know all all these um you know some of these um dynamic elements are certainly very uh important in terms of building the biofilm for the uh for the corals so it's it's just something that uh, are you are you currently dosing any of those elements at this point in time yeah so i actually have quite a bit of fondamarin products that i got so i got one of the ones that i really was struggling with was manganese because i mean i'm not even detecting manganese and i noticed my Ghanis just started to slowly die. And, you know, I've been pretty conservative following their recommended dosage of, you know, uh, 0.3 milliliters in my tank for the corrective doses. I was doing one and now I'm doing two milliliters and it's just my tank is just taking it in and I'm still on zero with it, which is interesting how each tank's kind of different. 
Yeah, you know, with my tank, I I always get um, zero for iron. I always get zero for uh, for cobalt. Um, I think manganese. I always uh, seem to tend to get zero or what have you. Uh, you know, when I was talking to Claude about all that stuff and I was dosing all those different elements, he's like, you know, some you got to watch it because it's almost like you're over fertilizing the tank by dosing too much. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's there's certain kind of elements that get absorbed very quickly in a reef tank and they just get taken in very quickly. So um, I have personally cut back on some of the stuff that I dose in terms of trace elements and, and just kind of focused on, um, you know, the uh, the important ones that we've been talking about. So it's, uh, you know, every tank is different, but you got to kind of just uh, watch the tank. And, you know, again, maybe that is something that's going on with the cyano is like you're, maybe there's an over fertilization of adding too much stuff to the tank. And it's not just trace elements. It could be adding too much uh, of the different types of food. If you're dosing bacteria, um, a lot of elements, you don't want to do that over fertilization of the tank. So it's, um, you know, it's important. I mean, Again, I've always said this, it, the important thing is what's the health of the corals? What, how are the corals looking like? You know, I mean, and, and what is your assessment in terms of how your corals are looking like at this point in time? I think most of them are doing really well, except my Ghanis. They just have not been doing well. I actually had to give them to a friend um, because I was like, hey, man, like, I don't want these animals to die. I need you to kind of take them for me for a bit. But everything else is doing really, really well in the tank. It's just, and I love Ghanis, but I just can't keep them right now well you know mike like there, it's always something with a reef tank right <laughs> nothing's ever yeah. uh, you never have any everything that's 100 percent perfect but um you know i think in terms of like what we've been talking about having a uh, that strong you know 101 ratio of uh, nitrates to phosphates and and concentrating on the dynamic elements and the halogens um, getting everything in balance being aware of the uh, of the ratios one other thing i wanted to mention is um selenium you know that's an important one for um for sps and and uh so that's something that's not detectable on your uh, icp test so i don't know if you're dosing that or not but you might want to consider doing that as well yeah i don't think i've ever dosed that so i probably might need to grab that for sure and it's never been detectable so yeah yeah all right well listen mike i want to uh thank you so much for doing this with me and talking about the uh, the ins and outs of your uh, tank and going over the ICP tests.